The week after the Masters, I went to Home Depot and got like some lawn equipment and just like cleaned the backyard for like four days straight. Like, yes, I accomplished something today. I didn't wow. just totally sit on my butt. <laughs> All right, Scotty, a ridiculous last few months. You have the WGC, you have the Invitational, you have the Open, and you have the Masters. How do you explain the last two and a half months when people ask you about it? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't really know how to explain it. I've just been playing good and I didn't make any crazy changes to my golf game. I didn't have a mental switch. I didn't, I'm not really doing anything different than I was doing a few months ago. It just so happened that I was yeah. able to win a few tournaments. Well, I want to start with the start, which was the Phoenix Open, a three hole playoff, but people forget that you almost didn't make the weekend there. Yeah. It never really felt like it was in true jeopardy, but I, I can't even remember my first two rounds. I do remember the end of the second round. I made a late bogey on six, and all of a sudden I was like, oh crap, like now I'm one shot from the cut line. And then I had like a 30 footer for birdie on seven, because I was, I was finishing on number nine. Mm -hmm. And I ran it by the hole like seven feet. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, if you miss this, like now you're on the cut line. Like, you need to pull it together. And so I made that one. And then the next hole, I made like a 40 footer for birdie to give myself a little cushion. Mm -hmm. And then made a good par. And, you know, then Saturday started happening. And so oh, yeah, you, you kind of went low with a little 62 on Saturday. You eventually win in a three hole playoff, right? Once you get the win, how does that change? your perspective on tour, how you think you're perceived on tour, does it change the way you think people are talking about you? I mean, it may change the way that y'all would talk about me, but for me, I didn't change any like thoughts in my head or yeah. anything like that. I took a lot of that experience from Phoenix and used it when I was at Bay Hill, mm -hmm. and I, was, I, I stayed really tough mentally on that golf course to, to finish well there. Yeah, so how does that feel different in your mind, that second win? That was way more of a grind. A different golf course, different conditions. How does that feel different in your mind than the Phoenix one? So what I learned from the final round in Phoenix was I think I made four bogeys, maybe on yeah, the front nine, yeah, all in, the, in the final round. But I always thought that going into the final round, I had to play like this amazing, like really great round. And so for me, what I learned was I don't have to play perfect. And so when I was hitting it poorly Sunday in Bay Hill, it was kind of like one of those deals. It was like, I know what I need to do and that's just stay in it and just try and hit good shots and not overthink things. So when I did make mistakes, I never really let it bother me. I think there's a lot of people that get into that moment and they freak out when they're not playing well. Like how did you know that you didn't have to freak out? I think winning is a skill kind of. I kind of always go back to when I started on the Corn Ferry Tour. My first event, I was overthinking everything. I was overthinking my swing, my mechanics, all kinds of stuff. And I missed the cut in the first event. We go to the second one and I was like, screw this. Like, I'm not thinking about this stuff anymore. I'm just gonna go out and play golf. And I basically just started playing like I was a kid again, like enjoying mm -hmm. it and hitting all kinds of shots and you know, doing things differently than other guys did. And I started rattling off some good events. And then I, I've just kind of stuck to that. Yeah, you've got a lot of practice at winning now. <laughs> uh, you've won four times in the last two and a half months. Are you good at celebrating your wins? Do you feel like you are, you are good at appreciating those moments? Yeah, I would say, you know, it's one of those things that's like, the winning feeling is so fleeting. So like, I win in Phoenix and it's awesome. Like we had a great night Sunday. It was so much fun. Relaxed a lot Monday, kind of enjoyed having the first win, and then Tuesday came and it's like, okay, we're at another tournament. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do that again. That was really fun. Mm -hmm. You enjoy that moment so much, but then you, it's so fleeting. And the next day, it's like, I got to do it again. Like, that was awesome. How does Ted Scott help you win golf tournaments? What's really unique to Teddy is his personality. He's totally unfazed. I remember one moment in Phoenix that we had, like, I got this horrendous break in a bunker. Okay. I had a really easy bunker shot that would have been easy, but my ball was in like a hole. And I somehow pulled off like this amazing shot to like nip it and land it on the fringe to trickle it down to the hole, mm -hmm. and then goes into a sprinkler head <laughs> and just spins around. Instead of having a putt from a foot, I have a 12 footer and I'm freaking out. I'm like, how could this happen? And he's standing up on the green, literally laughing at me. And I'm sitting there like looking at him like, dude, come on, man. Yeah. But then, you know, he just snaps me out of the frustration really mm -hmm. quickly. And, um, you know, most caddies, I don't think, would do that. Like, yeah. they don't have the guts to laugh at their player when yeah. something like that is yeah. happening. And, you know, he just keeps things really light. And we talk through all of our shots on the golf course. Mm. There's pretty much never a shot that I, I don't discuss with him. Then you move to Austin. Phoenix is sometimes a birdie fest. Arnold Palmer is a grind fest. This is match play. How different did that one feel? It was a lot different. There was a lot more nerves surrounding that one on Sunday. It's such a long week. and. The way it ended the year before, I was disappointed. Yep. But Austin was was pretty emotional. Yeah, it feeling. had to be. Your dad came out there. Yeah. And hugs you. You know in your mind you're the number one player in the world. All of your family knows it. And he says, "I'm more proud of who you are 
as a person than for your golf. And you're just getting a fleet of hugs in the moment, but gosh, I think people at home were getting choked up. Were you getting choked up in that moment? Too? Yeah, um, the winning feeling, I always imagine having a moment like that, but you have to stay so composed for so long to win the tournament. So by the time you actually win the golf tournament, you're kind of like, still in the phase of like, yeah. I'm locked in. And then when the tournament ends, it's kind of like, oh, I want to celebrate, but at the same time, I'm still mm -hmm. locked yeah. in. Yeah. Austin was really the first time where I kind of just got done. I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to enjoy this. Yep. Like, other than the Masters, there's probably not another tournament I want to win more on the PGA Tour than Austin. Like, went to college there. I just dreamed of being in that field and to win that tournament in front of everybody was mm -hmm. amazing. And yeah, that was pretty emotional. I really, really enjoyed that one. My dad is so funny. He got down. He's like, man, I'm glad I didn't say something stupid and start making funny. I didn't know there was a camera on. Yeah, that was that was pretty special. You also made headlines by saying, yeah. I never got this far in my dreams. What does that mean? What were in your golf dreams? My dream always was to play on the PGA Tour. Obviously, I wanted to win tournaments. I wanted to win majors. I want to win the Masters. I want to do all these things. And accomplish all that I can, but I never really focused on a world ranking or focused on winning this certain tournament. It was always just trying to improve. And mm -hmm. so when I said I never got there, I never really considered world rankings. You know, I yeah. never thought about becoming the number one player in the world. And I was always just trying to improve. I never mm -hmm. really considered that stuff. All right, master's questions. That's the biggest of the four wins. Can you explain Sunday morning? What's going through your head and what made you so emotional? There's so much that goes on with that golf tournament. It's the golf tournament. You, know, you get the green jacket, you get to come back to Augusta for life, and there's so much more that's attached to that golf tournament than just playing it. And I want to win it really badly, and what better chance than with a three-shot lead on Sunday, how much better can it get? And so for it to be my first one, and so I think a lot of that kind of weighed on me. Sunday morning was a long morning, but once I got to the golf course, it was kind of more relaxed that that's the stuff that's easier playing golf is easier than thinking about playing golf mm -hmm. when on the back nine did it start to hit you that you were going to get it done i would say probably after 15 15 is a scary hole there's Especially, so much bad stuff that can happen there like there's the back nine there is so special because you can play great and you could just completely implode and 15, now the hole's even harder yeah after i hit the second shot over and i had another nice up and down i kind of had a five shot lead and i was like okay now i really feel like it's my tournament to win. Mm -hmm. And all I gotta do is close it out, made a good part on 16. I relaxed for a split second on 17 and hit a horrible golf shot. Yeah. And I was mad, I was like, like, I don't want anything bad to happen. Like snap back into it, get back to playing. And I made a great par. I let myself enjoy it when we started walking up to 18. That's why people say, don't get ahead of yourself, one shot at a time, all those cliches, they, are, they reign true. Because that's when I had one of those moments like where I accomplished it. I can get the ball in the hole in like six or seven shots or whatever it was. And um, Can we laugh about it? Yeah. I mean, I was <laughs> laughing about it when it happened because I told Meredith after the round, I was like, man, I'm actually kind of glad I four-putted because if I would have made the second putt or made the first one, I would have been like an emotional wreck. But um, why would you think it would have been emotional if you made a three there? I think just because I would have gone from like so in the zone to like, to all of us, like it wasn't Austin where it was like, oh my gosh, like I just won the Masters. This is insane. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have just been a wreck. But since I four putted, you're able to kind of laugh at it. Like, that was really funny. Like, yeah. who's ever four putted to win the Masters? Scotty Scheffler has. <laughs> uh, this whole run has been incredible. What's been the hardest part of, of this stretch when you make everything look easy? Um, I wouldn't say that I've been making it look very easy, but um, <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I, I think energy levels are a little low. Yeah. Right now, I'm glad I have a little break here. But, you know, Meredith and I, we've really just been enjoying some, some time at home. Um, I've always kept a pretty low profile around here, and that's definitely not going to change. Um, what does that look like for you? The week after the Masters, like, I went to Home Depot and got, like, some lawn equipment and just, like, cleaned the backyard for, like, four days straight because I love being outside. Um, but I wasn't going to come practice or do anything like that. And so for me, I was just like kind of hung out in the backyard and like accomplished something. And like, you know, when you, it's just, like mowing the grass or like doing your laundry, like you feel like accomplished. And so like when I clean our pool and like leaf blow the backyard, like, and it looks nice. I'm like, yes, I accomplished something today. I didn't wow. just totally sit on my butt. <laughs> okay. And then last question, you said that you felt like you weren't being noticed after the three wins as much. Do you feel like you're being noticed a little bit more now in terms of being out in public? Does it feel like people are uh, aware of who Scotty Scheffler is? Uh, not really. I mean, <laughs> Meredith and I kind of 
there's a few places we like to eat around our house. They're like two minutes from our house. And so mm-hmm. we went to our usual spots and it was like alarming how many people were coming up. Um, but it was because it just happened like 12 hours ago. People were surprised that we were back. And, yeah, um, I would be. <laughs> yeah. And so it's kind of one of those funny deals where Meredith and I got home. We were like, man, that was a lot. Like, I don't like that was weird. Um, and then we did it again Tuesday and like one person said hello. <laughs> and so it was right back to normal for back us. Back to normal. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler, there's nothing normal about four wins, but congrats and I guess good luck on getting number five soon. Yeah, thanks.